Welcome to the Rise of Sulla. Let's go. Hey everyone, my name is Simsi. How you all doing? Welcome to episode one of my Total War Rome 2 DEI Divide et Impera Sulla campaign on the Mithridatic War scenario. The main objective of this series is to take Rome, defeat Marius and his loyalists and win Sulla's civil war. I hope you all enjoy. All right, everyone, as we're loading on in, I really do like this new loading screen once again. Dresden and his team have really outdone themselves. This mod is really quite enjoyable. So, this is episode one of a multiple part series slash let's play. So, stay tuned for episode two coming out soon. I've been playtesting this mod quite a bit and it's uh, thoroughly enjoyable. <laughs> I just, it got to a point where I'm sinking like hours into this mod playing as Mithridates and Marius. I was like, okay, <laughs> I've got to probably commit to a let's play now of this. So let's get stuck into it. So we're playing as Sulla. The situation is complex. We're currently at war with Marius, who has most of the Italian peninsula under his control. Same with Iberia and North Africa. We do have a bunch of uh, vassals in the east as well. And we've also got to keep a watchful eye on... Pontus to the Far East as well. So basically, the plan for this series is we want to focus all our effort, all our wealth in crushing Marius and his Roman loyalists in winning this civil war. If we have to sacrifice vassals, if we have to sacrifice territory in the East, so be it. The balance of power is not in our favor. We're definitely outnumbered. I would say we probably have the overall better quality territory resources and wonders just because we have greece however they do have most of italy which is a really strong strategic peninsula to hold and defend however marius's territory is a lot larger by mass like he's got most of iberia africa's massive as well so we're gonna have to be really careful navigating through those territory because there is a lot of choke points also with the Mediterranean as well. Crossing it without proper ships is going to be difficult. So Lucius Sulla is our faction leader. We've probably got more better quality generals on our side. Lepidus, Crassus, Pompey as well. And we've also got to watch out for, for those guys as well, potentially wanting to carve out chunks of our own faction. So I think in this series, we're going to have to use the terrain and our settlements to our advantage. Obviously... It is difficult going up against another Roman faction because Rome is the best faction in the game. So we're going to have to really uh, use our garrisons to our disposal because garrisons are really quite strong as well. Obviously, Marian reforms are in, so we're not using the earlier uh, style of Roman units. So I think we're just going to try and lure and trap legions and just be willing to sacrifice territory. I think like it's, it's, it's hard to say. like If we sacrifice Greece, but we can gain a consolidated Italy, I think that is better for us. We've also got to watch out for rebels as well, which is um, going to be quite tough. So what I'm going to do here now is basically get another army. We actually have Arinium and Taurus as well. And I might look to move or disband this legion in the Far East. We shall see. So looking at the tech, most of it is done. I think we need to go with Civic to get more money because that's going to bankroll most of our legions. But we have two pieces of territory on the peninsula and we we seriously cannot let that fall. We've got Taurus. Now, I, I nearly would say, like, if you could give Taurus to Marius, I don't know if it's, like, historically, um, like, at this time period, like, accurate for him to have that territory because holding Taurus is, like, GG. Like, as soon as you get Taurus, you're basically... Uh, going to conquer the Italian peninsula because it's such a hard settlement to take if you want to like navally invade from Apollonia So nearly balancing you could probably give that settlement to Marius and it'd be quite hard But we're gonna try and absolutely bunker down and hold that same with uh, Arinium as well. We're currently negotiating here with my uh, client states just 
buffering Pontus, and we're going to just try and get as much territory out of them as possible. Now, it's interesting. If we were actually bordering Pontus, it probably would be a little bit harder. Um, I think I want to focus on Rome. Look, it, I, I don't think pushing so far east against Pontus at the moment is in our best interest. Like, it's going to be easier said than done to win this civil war as we are fighting a Marian reform Roman faction. So, and especially with the balance of power not on our side. We also want to try and get some of these northern barbarians at least to amicable relations with trade and non-aggression packs and just try and get better quality relations with them. Because if you can get a couple barbarians at your gates, pushing over the Danube, pushing into the Balkans, it can really quite complicate things. So if you can't get trade, you may be better off just... Sorry, if you can't get non-aggression packs, you're nearly better off getting trade just to get some better relations. And also, we want to try and get as much money as we can so we can invest in our garrisons because we don't want to be constantly moving armies and fighting over settlements because in DEI obviously there's no force march so you really have to spend your traits wisely if you do want more um, campaign movement also we want to try and buff up our garrisons thankfully we're obviously a bit like far into the Roman Republic so the garrisons are going to be incredibly strong so I don't know how I'm still going to roleplay in this series. I think we're just going to go with, like, Roman dictatorships. Essentially an empire. Like, Sulla, we're going to obviously not say... Obviously, don't have Rome, so there's no Senate. But uh, Sulla, for all intents and purposes, is the dictator. And hopefully can have a long line and start his own um, empire, I suppose. I don't think we're going to get Sulla <laughs> to retire at uh, old age in his uh, farm or vineyard. Yeah, we'll try and negotiate with Pontus here, just trying to get as much money as we can, because it's always worth just getting that extra denarii. So, we've already increased that to 1,200, which is significant. We're importing a lot, and we're producing quite a bit to sell our wares. But at the moment, if we've got a full legion at Tyrus, it, like, with a garrison, it's going to be nearly impossible for Marius to get us out of Italy then. Like, honestly, it'll probably take two, three legions from the AI to to take that settlement like it is such a massive settlement for us to hold like if i gave any advice for this use do not let taras for whatsoever like i can't even imagine trying to move from apollonia get over to taras like i nearly wouldn't do it if there was a full stack there uh, of marius units like it'd be so so hard to take like seriously you'd nearly be better off going from the north so we're going to make sure we don't lose taras we're going to invest so much into it i'm going to assign uh pompey magnus to be the naval commander for this series and we might even adopt him into our family tree as well but we'll see but he will be the royal navy commander for this series and we'll try and get crassus and lepidus in the other legions as well Okay, so we could go with a spy here, just to get some intelligence. Trying to seize Beneventum is probably not a bad idea. Uh, securing the southern peninsulas, uh, it, it can be complicated. I think we want to try and focus on the Italian peninsula first before we focus on uh, Sicily. So I'm just going to go around here and put some edicts in. I'm going to go with tax harvest for now, rather than selling off food and going with the um the food st selling strat at the moment we've got a lot of other cultures in our settlements we are not largely homogenous latin wise so that can complicate things oh perfect so we're going to be able to accept some of these through the intern phase yeah getting like disease barbarians off my case is uh really quite a good idea so we'll try and hold irinium and we'll try and hold tyrus as well Okay, so already the public order is absolutely shot. Can we justify bringing it down? Because it nearly might be worth doing it. The main problem is, as you can see here, we've got a lot of Hellenic influence. Yeah, so shrine... Yeah, I think maybe aqueduct there as well. But yeah, we need to essentially flip this over to Latin as quick as possible. But also, they're quite large as well. You'd think at this time period, most of these would be largely Latin influence. I guess it's just trying to make it a little bit harder. Yeah, overall, I well, from what I've seen, I think Marius is actually the easier faction to play as. Let me know in the comments if you guys have played a full Marius series just yet. But uh, so far, I've been really enjoying my time playing this mod. And definitely open to be doing more.
on this. Potentially playing as Marius or Pontus, potentially. Now, unfortunately, we can't get decent quality units there, but that'll do. So there's a small army in uh, Beneventum, and we're just slowly but surely now trying to build up, and we'll keep an eye on some of these legions as well, Le Legion 1, and we'll see if we can strike some of these, but uh, we're a little bit outnumbered already. Okay, well... Uh... Just looking at our building situation. We probably could do with another army. If I knew that we couldn't get that decent units in Aretium, I might have been a little bit hesitant. We're going to assign Lepidus here to get some cohorts and legionaries in Apollonia. He is our mm, son-in-law, essentially, which is interesting. He could potentially one day lead the faction. Okay. So, public order is something we really have to keep an eye on. Still got a buffer state here, but this is what we currently control. Most of Greece and Illyria. We do actually have Sardinia, which is interesting. Carthage is destroyed at this point in time as well. So, I think we'll try and focus on, essentially, the western half of Italy. So, Legion 2 here is holding up in Cassentia. We've got line of sight. I think it's time to go with a plan of action and take Beneventum. I don't know where that army went. It's potentially gone north, so we're going to have to watch out for Crassus there. And this is a auto-resolvable battle. However, first battle of the series, we're going to play it, of course. Here we go. Here is the Battle of Beneventum. Going with the triple axis formation. Army group locked. I do like the formations in Rome. So, so we'll slowly but surely move up. Keep in formation attack. We don't need to drop discipline. But uh, let's have a look at the big fella. Where is he? There he is. Sulla, the man, the myth, the legend. So as the army marches on in for not a overly too difficult battle, I thought I'd do a brief history of Lucius Cornelius Sulla. So, who was Sulla? Sulla was a prominent Roman general and statesman who lived from 138 to 78 BCE. He was born into a wealthy family and began his military career in service of Rome, participating in several successful campaigns in Italy and in Asia Minor. In 188 BCE, Sulla was appointed consul and was tasked with putting down a rebellion in the Roman province of Italy. However, Sulla soon found himself at odds with his fellow consul Gaius Marius, who was also a powerful military leader. In a power struggle that came to be known, the First Civil War, Sulla marched on Rome with his army and took control of the city. After consolidating his power, Sulla embarked on a series of reforms aimed at strengthening the Roman state. He increased the power of the Senate, reduced the influence of the equestrian class, and reformed the legal system. He also appointed himself as dictator, a position he held until he resigned in 79 BCE. Sulla's dictatorship was marked by both reforms and repressions, as he used his power to eliminate political enemies and to establish his own control over the state. Nevertheless, his reforms laid the foundation for the Roman Empire, and he's remembered as one of Rome's greatest generals and leaders and statesmen. After retiring from politics, Sulla lived out the rest of his life in relative peace and died in 78 BCE at the age of 60. His legacy has been subject of debate, with some seeing him as a necessary evil who saved Rome from chaos, while others view him as a ruthless dictator who set a dangerous precedent for future leaders such as Gaius Julius Caesar. I'd be curious to know your thoughts and opinions about Sulla in the comments. Alright, we're just preparing to cycle charge them here. If we can target their skirmishes, that'll be good. The balance of power is probably 60-40 in our favour. DUI can be kind of weird sometimes. You're nearly better off auto-resolving in some situations if you do get the uh, balance of power on your favor. Like, if this wasn't the first battle of the series, I would uh, probably auto-resolve it. We've got some Hellenic cavalry charging on in here. Nicely done. We'll get our front line to pin and hold. And we'll just try and mop them up around the back. So... If you want to hear other topics on Sulla's Civil War, maybe some more in-depth stuff, let me know in the comments, and uh, we might even talk about it in some of the battles. Once, uh, Because sometimes the battles and sieges can get quite grindy. I don't mind talking about Roman history here and there, when it's relevant. Alright, nice peeler shot up and over the top. And we should be able to hold against these guys quite good. We're also uh, using some visual sub mods as well just to get HD 4k armor textures as well 
I do quite like the DEI visual sub mods. They seem to be working in this beta. Just to add that little extra crisp of quality, but we're going to be able to win this one now that we're just surrounding them from all sides. And Sulla should be able to get his first victory of the series. Nice. We'll continue, and we'll just try and run them down as many of them as we can. Get that experience up. But there is Sulla. Raising his sword nice and high. Bloody. Right into the thick of it. Nice. And we'll end that one there. A decisive victory. Beneventum is now ours. So, I think taking Beneventum is better. That rolled off the tongue well. <laughs> As Cassentia, it's quite a long stretch to get down there. And then you essentially leave Tana, Taras vulnerable. I want to focus on Rome. The quicker we can get the capital under our control, that would give us just like a huge, huge amount of legitimacy for the man who controls Rome. So, let's move the spy down here. They seem to be fortifying as well. Right, we'll get Pompey to move the navy to Asculum because we might be able to secure the settlement. The settlement, uh, not overly strategically important, but if we can trade out the vital salt deposits, that would give us a huge amount of money. Ugh, that order resolve is uh, savage. Crassus has been sent with his man his mate Pompey. <laughs> we might need to get Sulla over there to help. But there is still Legion 1 somewhere. I don't know where it is. It might be further north in the fog of war. Who knows? And let's get offensive military capacity and morale. That's what I like. Okay, so the Navy... Wait, where did that come from? That... Okay. During the end turn phase here, we've just been attacked by a small navy, nothing too complex. So, hmm. They are our fellow countrymen. I do hate killing fellow Romans, so we'll let them go. Um, damn. We're going to withdraw. Yeah, sometimes it's just not in your favor. Oh, Pontus has attacked one of my eastern allies in Asia Minor, and they're going to bring in Armenia. Well... We're definitely going to break the alliance. See you later. <laughs> We're not going to protect them. I can't afford a war against uh, Pontus just yet. Okay, so let's move in Sulla to give some military support. And we'll get Crassus to come in. So this should give us an over-resounding victory. Nice. And Crassus can start hoarding his mass wealth. Bloody goblin. <laughs> Alright. So, uh... Right. We sh oh, I was going to say, like, if we just keep Sulla out of range, we might be able to hit Rome in this same turn, but it's not possible. Alright, we'll keep Pompey. We'll keep Crassus here, and we'll try and get some better quality units with that army. Because we've really, we really only got one effective legion. Oh, that's actually heading south. Interesting. I can sabotage the supplies, but I actually might let it go south. Sardinia hasn't been attacked whatsoever. Uh, I do want to move in that champion as well. And we've got more military reinforcements going to Epirus. Oh, man. Again, we've been attacked here. Bithynia wants us to defend them. Like, we're just going to let them go. Unfortunately, we've been attacked here by some... Sam Knights that have rebelled in Beneventum and they're actually going to take the settlement. We're going to have to march back, which is going to complicate things. We're starting to get some pretty bad rebellions pop up all over the place. Yeah, the public order is not good. Um, I think technically we could have liberated them if we wanted to. But uh, yeah, we'll use Crassus's forces to retake Beneventum. Because that could complicate things. Making Sulla go all the way back with the main legion. But so far, we just, like, you can already see, we're actually just quite outnumbered. Okay, so that legion's just coming back and forth with Gaius there. Legion 2. That could be Gaius Julius, potentially. He's quite young, isn't he? Maybe he's too young. Alright, we're going to get 
Lepidus to send over a legion, and I guess we try and get that one back. So, Crassus is a little bit weak. Alrighty, so, I might need to bring up some more siege equipment, potentially. Because uh, we could do with a battering ram. Nah, let's uh, take Rome and try and bring it under our control. Let's go. Alrighty, here we go. The Battle of Rome. Oh, okay. So we can't actually get... Oh, I've been playing 1100 AD too much. It's been so long since I've played DEI. Oh, I've deployed <laughs> these units around here thinking they can... Uh, get the gateway on fire. Okay, so we're only going to be able to use our two ladders. That's going to complicate things. Because I'm assuming they're going to have a... Uh, fighting on the wall bonus. Okay, we'll move our archers up, try and drag some Arafar away, so we can have our legions be at a, a relatively stronger strength. Okay, so we're definitely going to need battering rams, and maybe even better quality siege towers. But I do quite like the blue and white, and the different color scheme for Sulla's infantry. And here he is. Ready to bring Rome, hopefully, under Sulla control. So as we're waiting for the siege equipment to move up, we've only just talked about Sulla. I thought it's probably fair to talk about Gaius Marius as well. So Gaius Marius was a prominent Roman general and statesman who lived from 157 to 86 BC. He was born into a humble family, but rose to prominence through his military and political prowess. Marius began his military career in the service of Rome, participating in several successful campaigns in Italy and Africa. He became consul 107 BCE and was tasked with putting down a rebellion in the Roman province of North Africa. Successful leadership in this campaign earned himself the support of the Roman people and cemented his status as a military hero. In the following years, Marius became involved in a power struggle with his rival, Lucius Cornelius Sulla, in a conflict that came to be known as the First Civil War. Marius and Sulla faced off in a power struggle to control Rome. Although Marius initially had support of the people, he eventually was defeated by Sulla and went into exile, which hopefully we can do in this campaign. Despite his setbacks, Marius remained a popular figure amongst the Roman people and was elected consul for the seventh time in 86 BC. However, his comeback was short-lived as he died later in that same year, at the age of 79. Marius is remembered as one of Rome's greatest military leaders and a champion of the common people. He was known for his reforms to the Roman army, which made it more effective and efficient, and for his support of the common Roman soldiers. His legacy has had a lasting impact on the Roman state and its military and remains one of its most famous figures. So now we have a little bit of backstory and a little bit of context and background as to who these two men were. What was the conflict between them? What was the spark? So, the conflict between Sulla and Marius began as a political disagreement over the direction of the Roman Republic. Sulla believed that Republic was in danger from increasing the power of individuals like Marius, while Marius saw Sulla as a threat to the stability and security of Rome. The tensions between the two men grew. Sulla eventually marched on Rome with his army and took control of the city. So I'd be curious to know in the comments, who do you think was in the right? Was it Marius or Sulla? Let me know. In my opinion, it's a matter of perspective and subjective interpretation. Like, on one hand, Sulla can be seen as being right in his actions. He believed that the Roman Republic was in danger due to the increasing power of individuals, like Marius, and saw his takeover as Rome as necessary to restore balance and stability to the state. Also, his reforms also helped to strengthen the Senate and reduce the influence of the equestrian class, you could argue, which some may see as a positive outcome. On the other hand, Marius can also be seen as having valid concerns and actions. He believed that the Republic was in danger from external threats, such as barbarian invasions. He may have seen Sulla's actions as a threat to the stability and security of Rome in his own right. Ultimately, I come down that there's no real clear answer as to who was right in the conflict between Marius and Sulla. It was a complex power struggle between the two powerful individuals, each with their own beliefs and goals, and each with their own perspective on what they thought was best for Rome. Hindsight is 2020. The outcome of their conflict helped shape the course of Roman history and had a lasting effect on the Roman state and its political structure, and you could nearly argue that it laid the foundation for the end of the Republic and was one of the contributing factors to the birth of the Roman Empire. So yeah, I hope you found that short little history recap interesting. It's uh, <laughs> been a while <laughs> since I delved back into my um, old history uh, analysis and essays and stuff, dusting off the old textbooks. But uh... Yeah, hopefully we can do some more sort of short history stuff through battles. I think doing a combination of two. Let me know if there's other specific Roman subjects you want me to hone on in. 
I do from time to time like to uh, go back through my old university work and try and condense it down for you guys on YouTube. It's a lot of work <laughs> to make it like semi semi uh, palatable for for YouTube, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Sound a little bit different. Okay, so this battle, um, just a little bit grindy, particularly when it's like grindy and not really too much is happening, like tactically. I find it easier to chuck in some Roman history here and there. If the battlefield is quite open and quite dynamic and it's changing quite a bit, um, it can complicate things, but Rome just looks beautiful. We're fighting a garrison as well. Sometimes when you're fighting an active legion, things can be quite difficult. But at the moment, we're trying to push through this narrow path with one ladder. We're going to try and get access to the gateway the quicker we can get our legionaries in the better. But overall, army build wise, still quite strong. Bunch of veteran legionaries and legionnaires. Uh, I would like to get some more archers potentially, but the thing is with my army build, that looks cool. Light, nice little bit of Roman architecture there as we're flanking around trying to take those crucial capture points. So army build wise is, good, wise is going to be a little bit difficult, different than what I normally would deploy in like an, a vanilla DEI Roman Republic save. Personally, my army builds, I like to have four, five archers and then like four units of cavalry, the rest infantry. Depending if you're coming up against a long... Uh, Depending if you're coming up against a lot of cavalry, you want some spears here and there. But because we're going to be doing so many sieges in this series against Romans, um, you're going to need a lot more infantry. So uh, nearly for this series, because we're doing so many sieges and there's going to be massive solid garrisons, I would nearly forego cavalry and potentially even archers to some extent. Okay, we've got the <laughs> battle of the officers there <laughs> as he keels on over. Yeah, so if we can have like two archers, because the cavalry is just going to get rinsed in order resolves. That's what I would do. Like, honestly, looking at the army build for this, having some more legion. Like, if we drop those cavalry and potentially drop the archers, we'd actually probably have a better result, potentially. Alright, we've got some legionnaires now fighting in combat against their general. If we can crush him, we might be able to cause a rout and get the uh, capture point under our control. But uh, so far, we haven't actually fought a full, proper Roman legion just yet. I do know because I've played as Marius when I was testing this mod to see if it was like, well, workable and was like able for me to commit a full series, which it is. Highly recommend it. Go find it on Steam. DEI. Version 1.3.2. The beta. I'd recommend it. Most of Marius's legions are actually in Iberia. So it's going to take a while before they can be deployed and moved on over. Obviously, he's got some in Central Italy. But, uh, come on, lads. Raise your gladius... Up nice and high. And let's take this city. We're actually fighting a lot of Hellenic-styled units there. But thankfully, Rome isn't too big either. Sometimes taking Rome can be quite difficult when it's fully expanded. But we're going to be able to bring down the banner of Marius and raise the banner of Sulla. Hoorah! <laughs> Alright. Just skirmishing us here. Got this gate one to our control. We've initiated the countdown, so... We should be okay. Committing a lot of forces there. We've kind of baited them there. Just gotta watch out for the response. We'll get one unit to hold the capture, then we might try and stop them. We haven't needed to deploy our formation just yet. Because we haven't fought a defensive battle. 
the discipline formation for Rome is just still broken ass. <laughs> but uh, always love playing as a Roman faction. I feel like you got to play a DEI campaign ever so often. Every six months to a year. <laughs> Alright, let's charge on in here. As long as we can stop those skirmishes from getting to the town square, it'll be fine. Stop them initiating the countdown. But so far, we're getting some small territorial gains. If we can take Rome, that would be massive. We can use that as our base of operations. And that's it. Decisive victory. Nice. So, so far, I think we've been quite fortunate. We haven't been drawn into any direct conflicts in the Far East. Pontus is still neutral with us. I guess, yeah, you just give up those vassals. I, I don't see the incentive of fighting on a two-pronged front, potentially with Armenia as well. But uh, Rome's been conquered, which is massive. We've got some rebellions here now, one in Iridium and Beneventum. Yeah, those can really add up quite a bit. That's just like another dynamic to this uh, difficult campaign. Okay, so they're back up here in Cassentia, Legion 2. Still got to watch out for that. How may I serve you? It's interesting that they're rebelling. I think it's just because we've conquered it so recently. Because that can just add up in losing men, manpower, and money. So Crassus has been sent to deal with another Samnite rebellion. Dude's dealing with rebels. <laughs> Hopefully, a slave by the name of Spartacus doesn't come up. Uh, Lepidus has actually landed here in Tyrus. So, like, it's actually not in our interest to push south to Cassentia. Like, it's going to take two, three turns there. You could get intercepted. Like, we're just going to hold down in the south, that is. I will get Sulla to move north, though, to Aretium to secure the wine supplies. Because once we get Italy locked down... There's even like a buffer zone between Massalia and Western Iberia as well. Another rebellion there, damn. Okay, so we're actually having a lot of rebellions popping up, but thankfully the garrisons are strong enough. The Roman garrisons are already quite strong, but especially now that in this time period are a little bit further along. What is it, 80 BCE? Yeah. Oh my god, they're really, really adding up. They really don't like this conquest. There's actually been a peace with one of my former vassals and Pontus. Interesting. Yeah, I think... I, I don't know. It, it'd be really hard to fight on multiple fronts. Because, like, look at this already. We're already outnumbered here. There's two legions moving north. That one's still in the south. How can I be of and we're still not at full strength just yet. We'll keep an eye on Cassentia. We might be able to make a play. Um, and let's try and... What do we got here... Yeah, Volunteer Legionaries are better than just the basic spear variant we've got. So let's try and get a couple of those in. Crassus and Lepidus are holding in the south. Sulloch might be able to intercept this army. Ooh, it's fortified. Hmm. I want to fight a Legion on the open field, but we don't have the archers for this. 2,500 against 3,300. It's... I don't like auto resolving like field battles but it would it, it actually would be silly to manually play this one a fortified position with arrow towers in this game on this difficulty yeah no thanks we're going to take the cheesy decisive victory there if they ran back would would give chase but 800 no we'd nearly lose half the army doing that um something I would recommend to you guys is be very, very hesitant about fighting fort battles in DEI. I think in my Sparta series, we had some crazy fort battles where we were like defensive, playing with Spartan infantry and just holding. Any offensive fort battle, you'd lose mass casualties, mass losses. But so far, decisive victory against them. That is half of a legion now crushed. And let's move to look to hit Patavium, I think. 
that army near it because we still got that under our control. It's probably going to fall though, you'd imagine. Yeah, during the intern phase, one of these legions is actually striked. Yeah, so it's actually taking them a while to get like the units to northern Italy. So it's nearly like if you can quickly rapidly take Rome and Beneventum, it's actually worth doing. Getting drawn into Sicily just yet? No. But thankfully I haven't lost any Eastern Territory. Which is a bonus. But to be fair, it's still pretty early days in this Civil War. Okay, so we've got some complications here in Illyria. But we should be okay. We've got some Illyrian pirates rising up. Let's throw them back. Now, I am curious if they'd be interested in peace. Because we just been outnumbered, like... Sometimes war weariness can be a bit of a thing. Like, it's good to have breaks in war. Obviously, the mechanic's not in there from Thrones, but uh, taking breaks from the conflict is not a bad idea. Okay, so they've taken Patavium. We've lost our glass supply, which is actually going to impact our trade quite a bit. Ooh, okay. So, we are not favoured to win this one. We're actually outnumbered quite a bit. It's an offensive battle as well. Against Gaius Gracchus. We have an opportunity to kill one of the Gracchi brothers. Um, let's encircle. And then we'll see how they react. Okay, so they've actually attacked me during the end turn phase. Which I'd rather. But 3,000. We're outnumbered by... 1,000 and a bit. Ooh, this is going to be a tough one. So, Sulla facing... Gaius Gracchus. Uh, who would have thought? So, triple axis formation. We'll hold in discipline. And hopefully, we're going to be able to crush one full Roman legion. We've already hit half of one. And then we might be able to swing some of the balance of power back into our side. Here's some of the HD textures. For one of the sub mods I'm running. Highly recommend. So this is the garrison force, I would imagine. And then the main force is in the rear. So we'll get that cavalry to harass. We're going to try and hold. Skirmish as best we can. And we'll try and get some hammer and anvil strikes. Once the infantry interlock with ours. Now I don't think this is the... Gaius Gracchus, as the timelines don't add up exactly. Maybe it's an ancestor or whatever. But uh, I thought I'd use this opportunity to talk about Gaius Tiberius, the Gracchi brothers. So, these two were Roman politicians who lived in the 2nd century BC. They were both born into noble families and were well-educated, with a strong interest in politics and welfare of the Roman people. Tiberius Gracchus was elected tribune of the people in 133 BCE, and he used his position to push reforms aimed at addressing the issue of landlessness among the Roman poor. He proposed a law that would distribute public land to the poor, which was met with opposition from the wealthy aristocracy. Despite this opposition, Tiberius was able to pass the law, but he was eventually assassinated by his political enemies. Gaius Gracchus, Tiberius' younger brother, followed in his footsteps and was an elected tribune of the people in 123 BC. Like his brother, he was a champion of the Roman people and pushed for reforms aimed at addressing the social and economic inequality. He proposed a series of laws that provided food and other assistance to the poor, as well as the reforms to the Roman legal system. Despite their popularity among the people, the Gracchi brothers faced opposition from the wealthy aristocracy and their reforms were ultimately unsuccessful. Both the brothers were assassinated and their deaths marked the end of an era of political reform in the Roman Republic. The legacy of the Gracchi brothers is complex and continues to be debated by historians. They are remembered as courageous politicians who sought to address the issues facing the Roman people. Others saw their radical reforms threaten the stability of the Roman Republic. Nevertheless, their actions helped to lay the foundation for future reforms and set the stage for the eventual transformation of the Roman Republic to the Empire. So I guess we try and focus on General sniping him now after that. Nah, uh, I don't think we got him. So we're just holding on from that first army now. And I hope you enjoyed that brief little history on the Gracchi brothers. We might be wasting a little bit of ammunition. That archer shot was quite accurate. To be honest. Oh, Like it wasn't just like a medium to long range 
volley. Like, really quiet and short up and over was quite accurate. I'm surprised. Right, I'm just going to move my cavalry out to the border of the map here because we, it seems like we might be able to bait the general further away from the main cluster of the enemy force. There even seems to be an archer unit coming. They're going with a flying triangle formation. So let's try and hit them from multiple sides. My cavalry has taken a little bit of damage. But so far, we are not favoured to win this one. So we're definitely going to need to try and general snipe and focus on their skirmishes as best we can. Okay. Now just got to watch out for their exit. Okay, now we can go. Now, these are not your tier 1 trash villates. These are like decent, quite heavily armoured auxiliaries. But, oh, they've turned. Okay, if we can manage to catch them from behind, we might be able to get a solid charge here. My cavalry already, you can see just how slow and sluggish that charge was because obviously in DEI, Divide et Impera, fatigue is something you really have to watch out for. You can't just mindlessly run around with your cavalry like in Medieval 2 and I guess even Vanilla Rome to some extent because they just get too fatigued. You've really got to pick your, your mark and chances when you run about a bit. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit of a trickle feed of their infantry tackling mine. But this is massive here today. If we don't destroy this army here, liberate the people of Batavium, the expansion of Cesalpine Gaul and hell, the um, consolidation and liberation of Cesalpine Gaul might be on the back foot. On the back burner a bit. Alright, we're going to try and hold as best we can. But it's going to be interesting to see how this one ends out. Okay, we've managed to crush that unit because we've hit it from multiple sides. Let's swing in the cavalry and we'll try and cycle charge. Just need to try and hold the line. But we should have an advantage with their general staff depleted. However, two armies are here. One from the garrison and one from the uh, the legion inside, of course. But so far, fierce fighting is now breaking out. Shields and gladius shattering and clanging. All right, let's... Uh, try and do some semblance of a hammer and anvil and then eventually cycle charge it was more of a bump than a charge <laughs> oh wow okay some of these are might be a little bit more high octane can we get a nice little boost here yeah there we go seems to be working although it's not like super super high energy yeah high octane cycle charging and doing this hammer and anvil tactic will work to some extent. So we're kind of throwing all our eggs into this Italy basket. Because look, if I had an option on the table to get all of Italy under my control, potentially sacrifice Greece and some of the other overseas territory, I'd probably accept it. Because Italy is just such a... like, It's probably the strongest peninsula to defend and hold. In Total War Rome 2. Like, the Iberian Peninsula has a lot of gaps. It's not as wealthy. I don't... Oh, maybe. Iberia is quite underrated, to be fair. But I, don't, I just think Italy, like, to defend... Sicily, Cesalpine Gold. Like, Cesalpine Gold, if you try and hold that... If you've got, like, three stacks... Even one stack, like, you can just bunker down anything. You can seriously throw back anything that comes over that Alps. And, like, holding Taurus, it's like, GG. Like, Greece is so, so wealthy... But, it is really quite vulnerable to naval attacks. Maybe it's because there's so many ports. Okay, so we're crippling on that right-hand side. We have managed to swing it back slightly, but I would still say we're not favoured to win this one. That's the thing, though. DEI, you can get away with it a little bit, but mods like... 1100 AD for Rome too, maybe in a couple of others, like bigger army diplomacy just always wins. 
Like, if you've got 4,000 to 3,000, geez, it's pretty hard to win a battle. And seeing to this one, it's about 4,300, so it's even a bit more. So hopefully our tactics can win out. We'll see. Like, maybe even 1100 AD as well. If there's 5,000 basing for 3,000, you, I don't even know if you'd even win that. Especially on the higher difficulties. Okay, so... That's an alright charge there. Oof. This is tough. This is going to go to the absolute... Bitter end. But... Yeah, tactically not really too much is happening. We're just sort of holding, and we're just going to try and cycle charge here. We might even need to throw in Sulla. We'll see. But at the moment on the channel-wise, thoroughly enjoying my one-off campaigns over the last couple weeks and months. I feel like I'm able to record a lot more. Still dealing with my hand injury. So hopefully that will get fixed soon. I mentioned it briefly, but that's... Why? And also, there hasn't really been anything brand new that I felt deserved a full campaign. Like, there hadn't been really anything new until now. Mithridatic Wars. But, uh, because I've been doing these mod spotlights as well, I've actually gone back to mods I haven't looked for a while. I did actually notice that Ancient Empires had a pretty significant update. I, don't know, I must have missed that for Attila version that 2.0, I think it came out last year, but I hadn't actually played it in over a year, and I was like, oh, that actually looks good, so maybe I should do an Ancient Empires series. It's been like four years since I've played that. But yeah, I was I was testing this the other day, and I was like, okay, it works. Because you, you gotta... I don't want to start series that I can't commit to, like if it just like crashes for whatever reason, or they're still ironing out stuff, but... uh. The 10 minute test turned into a half an hour test, and then, and then, it, and then I was like, oh... It's been like an hour or two, and I'm like, oh, um, I'm, I'm playing this <laughs> a lot longer than what I thought. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll make some plans and preparations. We'll do a series. So can't wait to spend the next days and weeks playing a couple hours of this and then uh, editing it down for you guys. So we might even get back to the old thumbnail as well. But we've also got like one-off campaigns. Because sometimes, depending on the total war and stuff, you can do a campaign in a couple hours or so and edit it down to one video. Like, as much as I like the Great War mod, sometimes those battles don't need a full Let's Play series. Like, I just feel like DUI is way more tactical. Alright, I'm going to try and have to switch on here. Focus. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't want to risk solo, but we might have to. Uh, I think we lost. Yeah, that's GG's. We're outnumbered there. Oh. I'm out of abilities as well. Maybe if I use them a bit and time them a bit better. Toss me right here. Oh, there we go. Oh, come on, just hold. If we just avoid that loss penalty, we'll be fine. Ugh. They somehow held. Oh, we got some guys in reserve. We'll get here quick. What are you? I didn't realize. I thought they were gone. As if they came back. Oh, come off it. Come on. No. Can we do it? <laughs> I don't know. I got no hope. Quickly, just like yeah, like. Get into the radius. Oh, this is going to... This might be a Pyrrhic victory. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Because we're tying now, and we've got a cavalry unit. Bear with me. Oh, no, that's capitulating there. Ooh. Also, when you're throwing in the general, there is a risk that you could get the RNG of losing Sulla. I don't think they're um, immortal in this mod either. So, we've got to be careful. If Sulla or Marius dies, that's it. It's a GG. But also, this might be a GG. Hang on, hang on. Oh, no way. Hang on. 
Oh, where would the camera go? <laughs> Bro, yeah, get it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Nice. Another one bites the dust. Yeah, pin that, then cycle charge that. That'll do. Yeah, hold on, Sola. Let's go again. Ugh. Oh, we're good. Nice focus on the last unit. We won. Sala, you beauty. <laughs> How we pulled that off. Wow. I guess history repeats itself. <laughs> Gaius Gracchus <laughs> bites the dust. Uh, I don't mind the Gracchi brothers. Obviously, descendants of uh, Scipio Africanus. My favorite Roman general. What's your favorite Roman general? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's try and run down as many of these. Oh, so hmm, this is still going to complicate things because even though we've won, we've won here in Patavium. However, it's Pyrrhic. So if there's any reinforcement, oh, if there's another stack coming in, we're stuffed. <laughs> we've already defeated a stack and a half up here, so I'd be surprised if there's another. But we're going to need to lick our wounds and then... Make plans and preparations to go for uh, Mediolanium, Mendelodunum, whatever it's called. I can never remember. I play so many different time periods, and I think it's Mediolanium in this. Um, and uh, Genoa, I guess we'll go for. It's Pyrrhic and it's costly. Yeah, so we're outnumbered by quite a bit, but we somehow managed to pull it off. And we've crushed a Legion in the process, which is massive. Wow. I am going to try and be a little bit more liberal on the ransom because it is an active civil war. Brothers versus brothers at the end of the day. And I could do with the money in some aspects. So the siege will continue. Also, like if we can crush them and there's like some like tiny little bit in North Africa that they've got, like I, I would accept a piece. Like, you've got to come to a compromise. I wonder if you can actually confederate in this mod at some point. I don't know. Alright, still dealing with the countless rebellions which are popping up. That's something you should definitely keep an eye on. But thankfully, the garrisons have been strong enough. We've thrown them back in Illyria. Another rebellion here. This in Crete. Even in Greece, we're having rebellions as well. But thankfully, we're able to push them back. No need to manually play those. Oh no, a child has died. Okay. Uh, one of Lepidus's children. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, now it is winter, and we're about to have a winter offensive against the last of the garrison that fled back into Patavium. And we lost our cavalry in the process. Oh, and some valuable legionnaires. <laughs> Oof. Oh, well. Uh, a Pyrrhic victory, though, in the process. And hopefully that will delay their advances for a bit. Okay, back down in Crete again. Another rebellion. Thankfully, none of them have really been that difficult. We're just sort of farming them at the moment. Taking the ransom, I don't mind. Give us a little bit of a additional money. I feel like in some areas, you can just like farm units if you want. Oh my god, another bunch of them. What's going on here? Oh no, all of them are... What's happened? Has that rate gone up on something? Oh no. Yeah, that's some pretty bad RNG. All of Lepidus' line has ended. I guess I'll try and seek spouses for Pompey and Crassus. Also, what I've found in Rome too is I find it really hard to adopt people into the family. Maybe it's just a Rome too thing. It's pretty hard to get the gravitas high enough. But I feel like in Attila, you can 
adopt characters like so much easier. Like I would like to get Pompey and Crassus into our line. Uh, we have had a rebellion here in the north. It's a slave rebellion. So Spartacus and the boys have appeared. And I suppose we get the one and only Crassus to go and deal with it. I think that would be quite fitting for him to put down this equivalent servile rebellion, I suppose. Man. Because that's the thing as well. It's not only just these small rebellions of ethnic factions that pop up, like you're fighting Illyrian pirates, you're fighting units from Knossos. When there's a slave revolt, it can be quite damaging because it spawns a full stack of decent units. Okay, so it looks like the Legion has fled back to Sicily, so... Damn, we could have used that advantage to push into Cassentia, but if we could keep it down there, that'd be okay. It's just because we've been distracted. We've only got two full legions in operation now. Well, one's been kind of cr crushed in Patavium, so we're going to have to replenish and repair. So I'm going to move Pompey down with his navy, because he might be able to come out and help. Okay, so it's going to allow them to flee further back. Uh, or then Pompey might be able to get in on this. We'll see. Hang on. No, he can't, unfortunately. However, it's uh, probably about time to end that one there. And we're going to start things off with episode two coming out soon, where we're going to have Crassus fighting uh, Spartacus, I suppose, and putting down this rebellion slash revolt. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for episode two. If you enjoyed this type of content, like and subscribe. And if you want to see more from me, check out the videos on screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.